Okay, in our video series of emergency medicine, in this video, we'll be talking about head injury. We'll discuss that how to manage a case of head injury. Step by step, we'll discuss that in which patients would you need to order CT scan within one hour of presentation and in which patients would you go for cervical CT. Whenever a patient with head injury presents to you, always have an ABC approach, always protect the airway, airway is the priority. And give oxygen if the saturation is less than 92% or if the patient is hypoxic. Immobilize the neck until the injury to cervical spine is, has been excluded. Usually the cases of trauma have a spinal injury and while protecting the airway, slight negligence can damage their spinal cord. So immobilize the cervical spine. Intubate if their GCS is eight or less than eight, intubate those patients. Hyperventilate the patients if necessary. Sometimes the pressure has been built up. There is raised intracranial pressure and raised intracranial pressure can be treated effectively by hyperventilation because washing out carbon dioxide causes vasoconstrictions of the vessel in the brain resulting in lowering of intracerebral pressures. Nurse patient in semi-prone position if there is no spinal injury to prevent aspiration. Stop blood loss and support circulation. Treat for shock if required with aggressive fluid resuscitation. Treat seizures. If the patient is having seizures, treat them with either lorazepam in combination with phenytoin. And then assess the level of consciousness in a patient. If the GCS is 8 or less than 8, then seek urgent anesthetic care and ICU care to protect the airway. You might need to intubate that patient. Then you need to do rapid examination survey. You need to chart down pulse, blood pressure, temperature, respiratory rate, pupils every 15 minutes so that if there is any deterioration, you can spot it down. Then you need to send investigations, do RFTs, electrolytes, CBC, blood alcohol, ABGs, toxicology screen and clotting profile and perform neurological examination. Take a brief history, when, where, how the patient was found. Did the patient have any fit or seizure? Was there a lucid interval? What is lucid interval? Sometimes patients get head injury and after the head injury, patients are conscious. They talk to their relatives. They say they are fine. They have got better. And all of a sudden they collapse and they die. Walk, talk and die syndrome. That is seen in epidural hematoma. Was patient intoxicated with alcohol? All this information can help you in the management of head injury case. Assess for retrograde and anterograde amnesia. Amnesia means memory loss. What is anterograde amnesia? What is retrograde amnesia? Anterograde amnesia means memory loss after the injury, post-traumatic memory loss. Patient cannot make any more new memories. Patient cannot memorize things now. Memory loss after the injury. Retrograde amnesia means memory loss of the events before the injury. Now patient cannot remember who his relatives are. Patient cannot remember his own name. That is retrograde amnesia. And the extent of retrograde amnesia correlates with the level of injury. Evaluate laceration of face and scalp. Palpate the deep wounds with sterile gloves. Wear sterile gloves and palpate the head and palpate the face and look for step deformity. What is a step deformity? If this is a bone in the skull and any injury to the bone of the skull resulting in one bone lying higher than the other one, that is called as a step deformity and step deformity is dangerous and needs correction. Check for CSF leak from nose or ear. Look for clear water drainage from nose or ear. That shows injury to the brain resulting in leakage of CSF. Any blood behind the eardrum, any blood behind the eardrum shows middle cranial fossa damage, middle cranial fossa injury, temporal bone injury. If present, order a CT scan. If you see clear water drainage from nose or ear, straight away go for CT and give tetanus toxide, give tetanus prophylaxis and refer to neurosurgical department because this patient has severe intracranial 
injuries and that is to be managed by the neurosurgery department. Palpate the neck posteriorly for any tenderness or deformity. If you detect any tenderness or deformity in the neck, immobilize the neck and order a cervical spine x-ray or CT of the cervical spine because it shows that the cervical spine has been injured and if you mobilize the cervical spine right now you will injure the spinal cord and you will give patient a permanent neurological damage so you need to protect the cervical spine order CT scan of head or neck if needed in which patients do you need CT scan of head or neck perform CT within one hour if the patient has Glasgow coma scale of less than 13, if the patient has any focal neurological deficit, if there is paralysis of the body, so if you suspect an open or depressed skull fracture, an open fracture or a skull fracture which is depressed, one part of the bone is depressed and that is pressing upon the brain, perform CT if the patient has panda eyes, raccoon eyes. What are panda eyes, raccoon eyes? This is a picture showing panda or raccoon eyes in which there is blood leakage in the subcutaneous tissue. It means that the head injury in this patient is involving the basal skull, the basal skull where the brain rests. And it means that the brain can also be injured. So order CT within one hour. Battle sign in which there is blood leakage in the subcutaneous tissue behind the ear. That is called as battle sign and it shows damage to the petrous part of temporal bone. Post-traumatic seizure. If the patient experiences seizures after head trauma, head injury, it means that there is injury to the brain or CT in that case. Vomiting more than once. If the patient is having vomit once after the head injury, it's normal. But vomiting more than once repeatedly, one after another, if the patient is vomiting, it indicates that there might be an increased intracranial pressure due to a hematoma, a bleed in the brain that is resulting in vomiting. Order CT of the cervical spine. Cervical spine CT must be ordered in less than one hour if the Glasgow coma scale is less than 13, if there is focal neurological deficit, just like CT scan of the head, or if there is paresthesia in the upper or lower limb, if there is paresthesia tingling, it means that the spinal cord cervical spine has been involved and injured. Therefore, you must order cervical spine CT scan. If the patient has been intubated, in such patients, there is a high risk that during intubation, there was spy, cervical spine injury perform CT of the cervical spine in high impact injury where there is sudden impact of the head can result in cervical injury. Neurosurgical consult must be sought if there is persistent Glasgow coma scale less than or equal to eight. If you are trying to treat that patient and that patient is not coming out of the deeply unconscious state, deteriorating Glasgow coma scale, especially the motor component in which the patient is not responding to the pain, patient is not moving his head against the gravity. In such case, you must have a neurosurgical consult that why this patient is deteriorating in Glasgow coma scale and is going into deeply unconscious state. If there is persistent confusion, Progressive neurological deficit, if the neurological deficit from the initial presentation is increasing now, penetrating injury to the head or CSF leakage, in such case, you must seek neurological consult. Complications of head injury, the early complications exclude extradural hemorrhage, subdural hemorrhage, seizures, and in the late complications, seizures, diabetes, insipidus, by damage to the pituitary, Parkinsonism, dementia. Poor prognostic factors in patients with head injury include old age, decerebrate rigidity in which there is rigidity of the extensor muscles. In this picture, you can see the decerebrate rigidity in which there is extensor rigidity. See the neck, see the hand, see the feet. This is extensor muscle rigidity, extensor spasm, prolonged coma, patient not coming out of coma. The GCS is not improving. Increased blood pressure, increased intracranial pressure can lead to Cushing reflex and hypertension. Temperature greater than 39. It means that these are all the poor prognostic factor in a patient with head injury. 
In summary, we talked about management of head injury with ABC approach, give oxygen, intubate, hyperventilate, and nurse the patient in semi-prone position if no spinal cord injury. Stop blood loss, treat shock, treat seizures, assess the level of consciousness, get the patient intubated if the GCS is 8 or less than 8, perform rapid examination and chart it down every 15 minutes, send investigation, perform neurological examination, try to find out the cause of head injury. See if the patient is having any retrograde or anterograde amnesia. Retrograde amnesia correlates with the head injury. Evaluate for laceration in the face and scalp for step deformity. See for CSF leakage. If there is CSF leakage, two CT scans, send them to neurosurgery department. Palpate neck for any cervical injury. CT head and neck are indicated in the cases mentioned here. CT cervical spine is indicated if there is paresthesia in the upper and lower limb if the patient has been intubated. Neurosurgical consult in all these cases and these are the complications of head injury. Poor prognostic factors, especially the decerebrate and extensor rigidity. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.